Hey guys, welcome to the latest episode of this unbelievable life. Today I have on with me photographer Rachel Edgington, and she is a portrait maker specializing in kids, family, high school seniors, and making her home in Evansville, Indiana. We love these local photographers for those of you that know me for a long time. Um, basically, when I was starting out my photography stuff, that's been like 20 years ago. Um, this is such a great community to do that in. But Rachel finds fulfillment in capturing the uniqueness of individuals and the moments they share with each other. Her aspiration is that clients take a moment to look at the details and observe the charm and enchantment our world has to offer while having lots of fun and laughing along the way. She is in constant pursuit to capture that smirk or that frown that every mama loves when allowing everyone to have the time of his or her lives. And she proudly joined the board of directors of MOPPA, the Professional Photographers Association of Missouri, in May of 2017 in order to continue growing the wonderful photography community in that state before moving to Indiana in the spring of 2019. Finally, she is the fur mama of the cutest basset hounds out there. Bastion is her wild man, just under three years old. He's getting over the click of the camera. And then she added Buster in April of 2022. He is her loudmouth boy, she says. And then her previous baby was Ralphie, who crossed the Rainbow Bridge in June of 2020. And his images are ones that she continues to treasure. Today, Rachel is going to be telling us about the positive of portraits and mental health. And I can't wait to hear more because for those of you that know, I am a rescue mama as well. And I lost my loved ones, my, my puppies in the last year. And I will tell you what, the power of those images when they come back through on my memories literally gets me every time. But I am grateful for the time that I had with them. And I am grateful for the journeys that they have led me to moving forward. So Rachel, take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about this. So um, as we know, I am a photographer and um, I kind of want to tell a little bit about myself, kind of what brought me to where I'm at today. So um, I grew up in a family where photography was just kind of the norm. Um, my grandpa, um, was a photographer, had a photography studio in a small town in Missouri. And my mother kind of helped him in that studio as well. So I grew up constantly being in front of the camera, um, all the time. So, um, when people say, Hey, I'm nervous about being in front of the camera. Like I don't look right. Things like that. I, I get it. Um, so one of the things I do though, is I put myself there anyway, like I'm always in front of the camera because I think it's important. Um, and I'm grateful that my grandpa always put cameras in my hands. Um, but it wasn't until about 2014 until I, uh, that I was like, you know, this is kind of fun. I really enjoy this and I want to give it a whirl. So I kind of got my first little DSLR, um, um not DSLR, a uh, film camera. Cause, uh, yeah, I graduated in 2000. So I'm pre-digital. And just kind of learned the art of photography. And as I've gone through um, the years, um, having gone through, um, you know, uh, um, the unfortunate tragedy of the um, Joplin tornado, um, which was in 2011. So I kind of had a camera before that, but I started my business in 2014. I really learned the importance of the printed image and um, just images in general and how important they are in um, kind of helping us mentally recover from things and stay connected to each other. And so um, I always want to take people back because um, I know our life has changed so much um, since, you know, almost, almost, almost like 20 years ago. Um, I want to listen to the noise of us opening those. I don't know if you can hear it but the albums that we used to have. Um, I know when I was a kid, that was my favorite thing. Go to my grandparents' house and open the albums and just flip through them. I still have an old school album. I don't know if you guys remember the, the you know, the pages that peel back and have that re-stickiness on them and things like that. And just being able to like look through those. Um, I know we are coming out of probably the most other than like 9-11, probably the most like impactful point in our history of COVID. And I think it was during that time with COVID after, of course, for me, the Joplin tornado, 
of really figuring out why printed photography specifically is so important to our mental health. Um, I moved here in 2019 not knowing anybody. Um, I moved here as a food photographer for a company called Waiter. And um, living in Joplin for 20 years, I'm kind of a Midwestern mutt. So like we moved all over the place. And I didn't really have any connections here, so to speak. So when the pandemic happened less than a year later, um, I went through a really hard time of being honestly lonely. Um, I didn't have a lot of connection to people physically. And Zoom, of course, got us by for a little while, right? The digital aspect of Zoom. Um, but there was just something about putting images on the wall of my friends and family that really helped me through that time. And so like personally, like my story, I am a person that practices what they preach. As you can tell behind me, I have photos, my hallway is lined with imagery. Um, my fur babies, I have two walls. I'm going to get another one dedicated to Buster as soon as I get his pictures done of my, my dogs. Um, so I can see them. My bed is angled in such a way that there's a wall in the hallway that when my door is open and I'm in my bed, when the first thing I wake up in the morning is the pictures of my closest friends. And I see their smiling faces. And so if I'm having a bad day or I'm waking up and maybe it's a stressful day to get into, I know and I'm anchored in the fact that I have people in this world that even though they're not physically there, they are there because they love me. Um, and so um, I wanted to kind of talk about some of the research that goes in behind that. I told you my personal interactions, and I think we all have those personal interactions, but um, there's definitely research behind what I'm saying. It's not just like, well, she's a photographer. Of course, she wants you to get pictures done and wants you to get printed images on the wall. But um, one of my um, friends, her name is Lynn Karsha. Um, she has a lot of really funny commentary on things, but she also brought it home um, with some of her, her quotes. And one of them is um, digital files don't become digital heirlooms. You aren't typically going to be passing around, as she said, too, because no one is going to be passing down a USB drive from generation to generation. Um, she also talked about how we were going to be the most photographed generation with the least amount of photos to show for it. And research behind that comes from, um, I think it was Forbes magazine. Nope, I'm gonna go back up here. Um, it's going to come from um, one of the researches, I think it was Temple University that said there's gonna be 1.3 trillion, oh, it's, a, it's above uh, research is what it's called. Uh, Rise Above Research estimates that one. 1.13 trillion photos were taken in 2020. 1.13 trillion. And that was with a decrease because of COVID. So it's even gotten bigger since then. So we're going to be the most photographed generation with the least amount to show for it. Um, so I just find that really important. When they also did some research, they um, have a study Honestly, it's called phototherapy. It was started in 1970 by a psychologist named Judy Weiser. And phototherapy is the field of psychology that encourages people, people's interactions with personal and family photos to help them understand themselves better. And what it does is it talks about how when kids see pictures of themselves on the wall, specifically in family portraits of themselves, it has a positive impact on their mental well-being. It helps them with their self-esteem. It helps them feel like there's a part of something. They're part of something. That um, their um, overall well-being is plugged into something. They're, they're part of something bigger than themselves. It also makes them feel more rooted. And that's not just for kids who are, you know, biological into the family. That is true for adopted kids as well. They talk about kids, unfortunately, who are in the foster care system. A lot of them don't have any photos of themselves at all. And when they get that opportunity, it is a big deal. Um, yes, sharing on social media is important. But there's something about having a printed image. They actually did 
a study, I think it was in Canada. Um, and this was, this was related to, um, marketing. So it wasn't specifically photography, but they actually did something, um, from the Canadian neuromarketing group called true impact. Um, so, so the neuroscience research showed that paper-based content and ads offered special advantages in connecting to our brains. So it did something for our brains that digital marketing doesn't do. And some of those were um, where they kind of tracked that was the eye tracking motion, the high resolution EEG brain measurements, and then of course, conventional questionnaires as well. And um, what they found was that physical material, so touching your photos, looking at your photos, it had a more realness to your mind than normality in in like digital world world so um it basically your brain recognized that it was more real than um looking at it in digital form something that's also very important in today's society especially as we get ai uh with artificial intelligence the newer generation, the younger generation is questioning everything. And rightly so. Um, in the photography world, you have people coming out with photos that look so realistic. And so there's just something about printing an image and having it right in front of you to say that, oh my goodness, this is real. I existed, my family existed, and we were cared and loved for. Um, that's also true for people who are aging. Um, there is unfortunately, um, Alzheimer's and dementia that people have to deal with. And as people get older, that is something honestly, like that they worry about. I worry about, even if our health is great, sometimes our mind isn't going to follow along with that um, bodily health. And what they discovered was the fact that if you have a printed image, um, it helped people with dementia and Alzheimer's kind of come back to their childhood. It helped them find joy and happiness and honestly remember memories of the past. And so that they feel more connected as well. It tends to calm them down um, because they do feel more grounded in seeing those pictures of themselves. Um, the, the latest um, finding from Temple University found that significant differences in the way our brains process to add formats. So that's that was kind of an interesting thing um, that um, was kind of cool to look at. When it comes to like uh, your mental well-being in regards to maybe hiring a professional photographer, like why is that important? And again, I'm not just saying that from, obviously I'm a photographer, that's what I do, but there's actual science to that as well. Um, they did research, um, NPR posted an article about research done that when people rely on technology to remember something for them, they essentially are outsourcing that material. They found, for instance, and I know I'm guilty of this, people are less likely to remember facts because they know they can go on Google and just Google it. So why remember it? Why recall it? Um, they also like an old school way of thinking about this, which we don't do anymore, um, this generation probably doesn't even know how to relate to that, the newer generation. Um, the fact that we don't remember phone numbers anymore. Why? It's in our phone. So like with with photography, um, they found that when people took pictures, especially when they took a lot of pictures, which is easy to do with your photo, or with your camera, um, they found that people really didn't re retain that memory because it's done, it's over. They were concentrating on taking the picture, not in being in the moment. So when you hire a professional photographer, for instance, to do family pictures or maybe a, an important event, for instance, like a wedding or anything like that, um, that allows you to be in the moment without technology taking that place. So you can still have those printed images to look back and, and, and remember on, and you can put yourself in that moment instead of kind of more remembering taking the picture than, than not, which is very important. Um, the, the study for this was actually first done in 2013. Um, it was done by, um, a psychology professor at Fairfield University named Linda Hinkle, the one that talked about it. She, um, showed that people had a harder time remembering art objects that they'd seen in a museum when they took pictures of them. 
and it's also since been replicated in 2017 as well as 2021. So this is something that that's been proven that you know if you're in the midst of taking the photo, you're not going to remember it. So mentally wise, menta- mental wise, um, you're not you're not going to have the positive effects of being in that moment because you were so focused on taking the picture. Um, when it comes to kids, I'm a huge advocate of kids. Um, I think that they are very important to our society. I think that there is a lot going on in today's society. Again, uh, we've got kids that have grown up in a pandemic, um, experiencing things that none of us in the past have ever experienced before. So when they do research on this, I'm very um, wanting in wanting to make sure that people um, understand the importance of it because I I feel like kids are our future and if we don't focus on their well-being then our future might be at risk so one of the important factors of doing of kids um there was a group called fracture which is a um it is a a print class print group that does prints and stuff like that but they did uh they talked to two um psychologists one was a Jacqueline Goda PD I'm probably like butchering that horribly um she's a licensed mental health counselor and um she is the owner of Jacqueline Counseling Professional LLC and she said as children's self-esteem tends to waver during their preteen and teenage years displaying family photos throughout the home is a great way to build more solid foundation for the confidence and self-esteem early on um she said when children grow up seeing their photos of themselves proudly displayed across their home, it says to them, I am valuable and am and an important member of my family. They also talked to a licensed independent clinical social worker. Um, and she said she firmly believes that family photos can help get children started on the path of higher self-esteem than they would have otherwise. She said, according to her, it helps children understand that they have worth because they were born and are equal to everyone in their family. Um, Dr. Jacqueline also goes on to say that is especially helpful for children moving in with blended families, which is happening more so than ever before, and also with adoptive families. She says displaying family photos can create a feeling of belonging and a sense of security during life transitions. She says it can also comfort them, helping establish trust in a family and therefore trust in themselves. She also goes on to encourage parents to ask their children directly, which photos would you like in their home? If they feel that they are part of that, then that helps them feel more rooted and grounded, which is a cool activity. I never, we never did that in my family. Like my parents were like, what photos do you want? But I do remember growing up having photos everywhere. Again, I come from a photography family. So um, I know that that's a big plus. So my mom's side was the photography family. My dad's side was different. They didn't have a lot in the way of the photos just weren't as important to that side of the family. Um, they just didn't grow up with that. They were a little bit, um, I guess, they were more of a working class family. So it just wasn't something that they saw. And I know a direct connection for that. So as a child, I felt more connected to my mom's side of the family than my dad's side. Um, I still like my um, lost both of my grandmas in in um, 2020, towards the end of 2020. And one of my biggest regrets and kind of frustrations was that I didn't get a chance to sit down with my grandma Edgington and go through the family photos with her to know who people were. Um, we inherited a huge amount of photos, apparently, that we didn't know existed. My dad didn't know existed. And a lot of the people in those photos passed away before I ever got a chance to meet them. And so as cool as it is to see these old photos, they're kind of not connected to me. Like there's not a connection, a mental connection there. Um, to me, they're just strangers. Whereas if I, I'm, I we also inherited a bunch of photos from my mom's side of the family because my grandpa was a photographer. So there's lots of photos to go through. And it's cool to see my emotional reaction to those photos and seeing people that I grew up with at a much younger age and different parts of times in their life, seeing how they look like other family members, like, oh, my grandma looks so much like my cousin, 
or, oh, she had a gap in her teeth when she was younger, which she had dentures by the time I saw her, which is just like my cousin, she said, who hates her gap in her teeth, but she's like, well, wait, she got that from grandma. So like, it's kind of this really cool thing to, as a child, um, and then as we get older, to see those connections with our family, especially with family that have passed on, or family we may have never met, but you see the resemblances there. So kind of going a little off track on that, um, I know for me and many others, what COVID brought on was also just being frank and open, um, an extension of something that I suffer with um, and thankfully get a lot of help for, and that's anxiety and depression. So anxiety and depression is higher than it's ever been before in our society. We are um, constantly stressed and worried, um, tensions I know with a lot of homes, especially when everybody was like crammed into their homes for several weeks on end, just ran rampant. And depression is also something that's really difficult. I know for me, again, because I was dealing with loneliness, depression was also a part of that because of the fact that um, I didn't have the emotional connections to, to see people and go do things. I mean, everything was closed. So um, where that kind of comes into play is um, in that same article um, that I discussed with Fracture, they did talk about how it can be very important in family dynamics. So if you're angry at each other, for instance, you guys are on your last nerve in the house, the kids are annoying you, or your spouse is just not listening to you. There's something that happens when you look back on a photo, maybe it's a wedding photo, maybe it's a goofy photo that snapshot you guys took, um, you know, where somebody was making a silly face or, or along those lines, it really brings back the emotions that you felt during the midst of that photo that was taken and it kind of reminds you okay I need to take a breath you know my anxiety needs to relax like there's just something that grounds you when you see an image and it just kind of kind of brings you back um to why you're a part of this family why it's important to um you know be a part of it all so What is really interesting about photos, too, is um, a lot of people have a hard time seeing their value, right? Um, We are very much in a society where it's like, what is in this for me? And, you know, they they had, was I think it was in 2017. Um, I'm looking this up really fast. They sold a picture of um, Billy the Kid. And, um, yeah, two authenticated 140 year old pictures of the outlaw Billy the Kid were sold at auction for $2.3 million in 2011. And then they were sold again for $5 million in 2015, making them the most historic, most expensive historic prints possible. Now, pictures of me probably never going to go that high (laughs) unless something notorious happens hopefully not um but when it comes to our our like well-being they can become priceless I always tell people um I'm not expensive I'm priceless um there's just a lot of really cool unique things that happen with a photo and there's an emotional connection to it um probably one of the saddest things I see is when I see like old family photos in like a bin somewhere at an antique store getting sold. And I know like, man, that was important to the family at one time. And this person had a story and they had a connection. And I just think it's, it's something that as we kind of step away from the printed photo, I think in a few years, we're going to understand how important they really are to us. And I really hope that people see that now more than ever. Um, a cool story kind of offhand too. Um, just about a connection and I don't have a picture of her to show, but there is, um, I have several old images because again, the fact that you can hold in your hands an image that is over a hundred years old, there's nothing like that. You're not going to get that with anything else. If you were to hold a document that was over a hundred years old, probably going to be in a museum somewhere. Typically people aren't going to hold things that are that old, but there's photos that you can hold in your hand that have been touched by people over a million, like, I don't know, it's millennia, but probably millennia. Um, but one of those photos, which I kind of talked about in my in my Facebook um, feed, uh, was of a young girl. 
and I didn't really have um, much information about her, um, but she had the sassiest look on her face, and I love that. It was taken, I think, in 1908, if I remember correctly. Again, I, I have it, you know, um, scrolled away somewhere safe, and um, and she was, I think, it was for her eighth birthday. And it was like taken in Saginaw, Michigan. That's about all I had. I think I had her name too. And so I always posted a little photo of her on the anniversary of her birthday because it said it was taken on her birthday. And um, one of our gals here in, in the area, Heidi, she encouraged me to like, why don't you kind of do some research on her? And so I did and um, reached out to the uh, library in Saginaw, Michigan. And lo and behold, I found more information about her. She not only was sassy when she was growing, growing up, she grew up to be a sassy lady as well, which I love. Um, she was very much into her community. And in fact, her brother was the secretary, treasury, secretary, uh, sorry, I'm going to mess this up. The secretary of treasury. There it is. I always get it wrong. For Dwight D. Eisenhower. And her, the way I got the photo was when I lived in Joplin, Missouri, apparently her sister lived there. So that's where I got the photo. I think I went to an estate sale and probably picked them up there because it's been a bit since I like recalled where they were from. Um, and so I got to learn about her life. I got to see pictures of her growing up. Um, when she was a teenager, she had the same sassy look on her face and she um, was an amazing lady. Apparently, everybody in the community of Saginaw, Mission of Michigan, loved her. Um, she was um, just a, a wonderful person, which I kind of got when I looked at this image when she was a kid. She just had this image to her, like, I know I'm awesome. And it was cool to see that connection and to have her story, even though... Um, even though I didn't know her personally, I felt like I was able to find her story and bring it back to life again. And emotionally for me, it was kind of cool um, to connect to somebody that isn't me, you know, isn't part of my family, but to still have that connection back to Joplin. I got that connection while I was living here in Evansville. And for the emotional part of it, it was just kind of this, Again, realizing that my my life is connected to something much bigger than me. You know, here's this woman I've never met. Um, I never met her sister, never knew who she was before. And now I have a piece of her life in my hands. And I was able to also give that over to the um, library. So they have it now for their records. And so if her family is there, they now have a piece of her back again, which I think is just really exciting. So. All that to say, um, I'm a huge proponent of prints. My major push for photography is for people to know that they are loved and that they are cared for. And I think there's nothing like photography that says that, you know, like to me, when I have an image of somebody on the wall, that to me shows how important they are to me. Um, when you have that connection, when you see your image on someone's wall, you're like, oh, they care enough to take the time to put me on a wall to tell everybody that comes to their home about me. Um, while that's important to get on Facebook, most of the time, the longest that's going to last is a, is a scroll. Oh, okay, this is cool. Two or three days later, everybody's moved on to something else. But when you have that permanence on someone's wall, there's just something about that that really makes you feel just good. It makes you feel loved. It makes you feel cared for. Um, so I hope that anybody that listens to this, um, kind of me jibber jabbering and getting on my soapbox about it, I hope that they'll take the time to not be afraid of the image they see in the mirror. Because honestly, what we see in the mirror is not what everybody else sees. And that they will take the time to contact their local photographer, uh, make sure it's somebody that is good quality, that honestly isn't just going to give you a CD or a USB because those work, but those aren't going to last. I mean, I know computers now are coming out. They don't even have CD inputs anymore or USB imports anymore. So just in my 10 to 20 years as a photographer, I've seen it go from 
um, floppy disk, believe it or not, <laughs> the hard disk, to CDs, to USBs, and now digital download. But you know what hasn't changed? A printed photograph. I still have pictures right here in front of me of when I was in high school. They're still beautifully printed. They're still full of color. And they just tell a story of my life in high school, my life in college. And they make me smile and they make me laugh because I remember what it was like during that time. And so if you want to ensure that your kids, if you have children, feel like connected, don't let five years pass by without a family picture. Um, because that is going to really like those years seem so short in the long term. And it's really important to get those down. A lot of people come to me and say, well, I don't have the wall space. You don't have to always put up something on the wall. You can do an album. You can do um, these these little boxes that I have called um, album boxes where you can put photos in them and you can pull them out and look at them and put them back. And they're very decorative and beautiful. Um, and um, I just think it's just so important. One of, one of the things I'll end with, which I think is hilarious, uh, if you guys have a chance to Google or go onto YouTube, um, I think Kodak put it out. It was, um, I can't remember exactly what it was called, but if you look up Kodak commercial that says never again, I think it's what the title of the commercial is, but it's basically why it's important to print. And this particular commercial kind of made the cycle about five years ago. And a little girl goes up to her. Well, it starts with the mom printing her image from her Kodak printer. Um, and it's, she said never again. And you're like, okay, what's happened? So she is sitting on the couch and her daughter is probably about eight comes up to her and she goes, mom, why aren't there any pictures of me on the wall? There's pictures of my brother and my other sister, but no pictures of me. And she said, well, honey, because I have you on my phone. And she goes, okay. And then proceeds to walk by knocking everything off the wall, not caring about anything because she's like, obviously I'm not important enough (laughs) because I'm not important enough to have on the wall. Now it's a little funnier to watch (laughs) than it is for me to describe. So I would highly encourage you to look that up, but it just kind of showed the importance of having a printed image. Um, Yes. She had pictures of her daughter on her phone, but I know so many people that lose an entire lifetime when that phone is stolen, when that phone is broken, uh, when they get a new phone and it doesn't transfer. And yes, can photos be lost in things like, unfortunately, tornadoes and fire? Yes, but the likelihood is there's going to be backups to those photos. Your photographer, if you had a professional photographer, is probably going to have those photos archived for you to get prints again. Um than if you lost your phone. And that breaks my heart more than anything to have to go to your child and say, I'm sorry, I don't have the pictures of you walking. I don't have the pictures of your first birthday. I had it all on that phone that's gone now. So don't do that to your kids. Don't do that to yourself. Um, Get somebody that you trust, Uh, make a day of it, Um, make it an activity, make those, uh, make yourself feel connected. If you're single like myself, Take pictures of your dogs if you have them or cats. Put them everywhere. It still helps you to feel that connection. Excuse me. And so um, that's about all I have. I don't know if there's if you have any other questions to expand on that, but um, I I I was just I was just gonna say I can't stress enough how much you hit the nail on the head. And for anybody that knows me and follows me. I am always stressing, be the one that takes the pictures, get the pictures, capture those moments because you won't have them back. It goes by in a blink of an eye. I have a a 17, soon to be 18 year old and a 19 year old. And I, I have my printed pictures and, and I just, it goes by in the blink of an eye. And so, um, you know, a few little nuggets that I can share, I'm going home for Easter to my mom's and she keeps the albums and the, the containers of pictures. It was literally one of the things on my to-do list this weekend was just to sit and to go through those pictures. It's one of my favorite things about going home as as a 44-year-old to sit and go through those old pictures and see my mom growing up as a kid, me growing up as a kid. Um, So I just can't stress the connection with photos enough. 
Um, and then two, the printed pictures that I have done with my kids. Yes, I have all these photos on my phone and on social media, but a couple years ago, I it dawned on me, I only have albums of their early years. So what I try to do every year is to go through and pick out my favorite prints and print them. And I do one for each child and one set for myself. And so they have what I put them in as photo boxes for them because I... I'm not really the album person, but I want my kids to be able to go through those boxes, just like what I'm doing at a 44 year old going home. And I want them to have those memories. Um, and then, you know, going to our parents aging, um, that's one of the things I've been trying to capture more is I specifically, you know, one of the last times I was home said, mom, can we get a generational picture of her, myself and my daughter? Because we really just don't have that anymore. And I don't for a second want to lose out on those memories. So, um, you know, and lastly, that wall of photos when we were at the Bainey house, personally, we kept it very neutral because we had a lot of guests and we had a lot of people in the home. But one of my goals had been to use the second story as our photo spot. Well, we never ended up in the nine years we were there, ended up painting the walls. That had been the goal, paint the walls, put up the photos. So that is literally going to be one of the first things I do in this new house is put up the photos because I want my children to see themselves. I want my guests to see our family and have those memories on the walls. So, you know, thank you so much. You, like I said, hit the nail on the head. It is so critical and so important. I thank everybody for listening today. And I hope you run out and go schedule your photographer appointments. And those pictures that you have on your phone, guess what? You can print those. So start that archive, be the historian for your family, be the keeper of the memories. On that note, again, thank you all so much for listening. Take care and have a blessed and wonderful rest of the day.